Hi, I'm James Bailey from Transmill, and uh, we're going to now have a little chat about noise in electrical measurements. Uh, I expect most of us have at some time tried to order up a drink in a bar in a crowded pub with a band playing in the background, and the barman's really struggled to hear us ordering that drink. Uh, and this is the same, exactly the same scenario as making any kind of electrical measurement. It comes really hard for the measuring instrument to find the true signal in amongst all the noise that's being generated. Now, some of the noise that's being generated is coming from the connection leads that we use. Uh, and there's noise, electrical noise around us everywhere. One of the main components is, is, is simply the line, the radiated noise from our power line, which is normally either 50 or 60 hertz. And of course, everywhere in these buildings, we have power cables running, generating quite large electromagnetic fields. Uh, and just to give you a little example of this, um, is that uh, on, on a scope, um, we've got the scope probe here, uh, sensitivity of 50 millivolts per division and here on the bench I've just got a couple of bits of wire running around which are acting as aerials and when I put the scope probe on the wire you can see it's going right off the screen so just on this bit of wire here we've got over uh, 400 millivolts peak to peak of noise now if we were connecting this using this wire to connect it to um, making a measurement across the resistor which had a volt or so on it, we would have over 200 millivolts of line noise being picked up that the measuring instrument would somehow have to try and disregard. Now, almost all modern measuring instruments are very, very good at rejecting line frequency noise, but you can only go so far and coming back to the poor barman in the trying to hear your order over the band singing away in the background, there comes a time when it just can't be done and it always starts to increase the size of the errors as the noise becomes larger and larger. Now here we saw the line frequency noise that's around us everywhere, but there's other effects as well uh, that influence the reading and uh, we're going to go on to have a look at other noises that come that get picked up when cables and things just move in the magnetic field that surround us everywhere. So moving on to look at another noise source that we've all seen when we've been trying to make measurements, particularly usually high impedance measurements, that uh, sometimes uh, we mistake for the measuring instrument itself uh, giving us an unreliable instrument. And the here I am, I, my leads are kind of long to sort of exaggerate the effect that we can see of the, uh, the pickup you get in, in long unscreened leads. Uh, again, using the little microvolt null meter we had before, uh, 30 microvolt sensitivity here on the range, um, 30 microvolts again, 30 ppm in, in, in one volt. Um, and if I just for a moment, just swing the red lead around. I don't know whether that's clear in the video that, uh, yeah, I'm getting quite a nice little signal there uh, of low frequency bobbling about um, on there. Now, that's because I've deliberately separated the red and the black wire here and swinging the red wire around uh, so that it picks up the Earth's magnetic field and induces a voltage in it. Uh, and one thing you quite often hear uh, about having twisted pairs of wires. And if you twist the whole lot together, so the red and the black wire are taking the same path, see the effect has almost completely gone away. So it's always worthwhile, if you can, having as short as lead as possible and having them twisted together if it's not going to give you insulation problems and keep them away from mains line noise. All of these things will introduce additional noise over and above 
what's going to be in the measurement anyway.